guys thanks so much for clicking on this video now i want to give you a quick announcement i am going to be starting up my online coaching for everyone that's interested now limited spots are available so if you want to start to train with me just go ahead and click the link in the description to find out more details i'll see you on the inside what's going on guys feel the rule back again with another video Today, I've been getting some questions on how to actually recover from hard training. So I'm gonna give you some methods that you can utilize to help you stay in the game and keep on progressing as you go through your training. All right, let's do this. All right, so for the first method that we're gonna utilize is low level aerobic training. Now I know this sounds kind of counterproductive. Why should I recover when I'm doing some more work? But at the end of the day, we're trying to get blood flow. We're trying to get blood flow to the surrounding muscles that are let's say, damage from working out, all right? And you're also increasing your VO2 max, but you're gonna do this in a low level intensity for a somewhat of a moderate volume, okay? So it's gonna be 60% or below of your maximal heart rate. You're gonna do about 10 to 20, no more than 30 minutes on this low level aerobic training. Now you could do this with your weight training, whether it be some sort of resistance work, um, working the joints in all different directions and multi-directional patterns. Um, just to get blood flow to the surrounding tissue so that you're not staying stagnant and letting that lactic ability to produce more overall acidity inside the muscle. And also we're trying to make sure that we're getting that blood flow to the damaged tissue. Okay. Um, soft tissue work, right? So you're talking about salt, uh, myofascial release treatment, foam rolling, massage therapy, anything that's going to help give you a sensory input, efferent, afferent, to uh, produce more uh, overall recovery, but also relaxation inside the muscle. So you're breaking up any type of tightness, any type of blood that's getting rushed there. Um, when you do work out a muscle, um, the, uh, the overall tissue, the, the fibers get broken up, right? Especially if you're doing large amounts of hypertrophy. So when you do that, you wanna make sure that you're giving the muscle the adequate amount of recovery by stimulating the muscle and the tissue there to relax. And you do that through low level massage therapy, not high amounts of digging in. We're not talking about deep tissue massages. We're more talking about just recovery. So getting the muscle to relax is more of an importance. All right, next up is cold and heat therapy. Now with the cold therapy, we're talking ice bath, we're talking cryotherapy. The reason for that is we want to bring down inflammation, right? Inflammation is the root cause of pain inside the muscle. Um, it, it rushes blood to that tissue. So what we want to do is bring that down so we can start the recovery process. You want to do that directly after a training session. Now, if you are doing hypertrophy, you want to wait a little bit longer around three to four hours because you do want that inflammation to occur so that your muscles can grow. But if you're talking about overall strength, and explosive power movements like that go ahead and hit the ice bath so you can recover very quickly especially from my mma fighters okay saunas now with the sauna and the steam room right that's primarily just to bring the body back down to recover and basically uh, relax the muscle right relax the tissue right that's what we want to do when we're going into the sauna we're getting that heat shock protein built up so that we can increase our hormones when it talks about growth hormone and testosterone there's tremendous research on hypothermic conditioning that you can check out I'll put the link in the description also so you can see why the benefits of overall sauna use is important for testosterone and growth hormone release also when you're talking about recovery and managing your fatigue it's also important Okay. Meditation and yoga. Now meditation for me is something that we do on a daily basis just so I can relax my mind, right? Mental fatigue is just as damaging as physical fatigue. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we're taking the time out of the day to just decompress, right? You can do that with form of yoga. You can also work on your stretching, your overall mobility and movement but you wanna keep that intensity very low, all right? So the main purpose is to just move and feel free and just clear your mind of everything. That's going to increase your overall ability to recover. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with the calves. So what you're gonna do basically, we'll put the, uh, the leg on top of the roller, right at the bottom where your Achilles lies in the front. Interlock your leg, put the leg on top. From there, you're gonna place your hands down, plant yourself, get your hips up and then roll throughout the soleus to the gastroc and then back out. In and out.
You can do that about 10 to 20 times. All right, so now we're gonna work on the adductors, going all the way down to your vastus medialis, to the inside of your thighs, right? So we're gonna start at the top part, right? We call that the teardrop, right? So your VMO. Then from there, you're gonna drop your hip down and roll all the way through up into your groin, then back out. Again, down. You can put more pressure by getting lower to the floor. Up and down again. About 10 to 20 times. Okay, going on to the hamstring now. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put our foot over our knee this time. All right, then from there, I'm gonna get my hands placed, my hips up, and then I'm just gonna roll all the way through from my hamstring, almost to the back of my knee, up into my glute. Good. Do that 10 to 20 times. Okay, Good. moving on to the glute. Preferably, you wanna work on that glute med, that piriformis right into the mid part of your glute to the upper quadrant of the glute because that's where the most of the tightness lies. So that's, and also if you can get that to relax a little bit, your overall movement will be a lot better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, plant the foot, okay? The glute that you're going to do, make sure you get on that side. You go ahead and put your knee on the other side or your foot on the knee. Then from there, you're just gonna roll across that piriformis, across that glute, glute med, all the way through to the glute max, up and down. We're gonna do that again for 10 to 20 reps. Okay, now we're gonna work on the hip flexors and the tensor fasciolator or TFL, right? This is going to help with flexion of the, of the knees, flexion of the hips. Also, it's going to help with overall movement going lateral and linear, okay? So, I'm gonna take the foam roller, you come down, all right? Put it right on the edge, and then you're just gonna roll across that soft tissue, staying away from the hip bone, and just roll across that TFL all the way up into the upper quad, and then back down, back up, 10 to 20 repetitions again. Okay, so now we're gonna roll out the muscles of the lumbar spine. All right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay flat down on the roller, all right? Then from there, to hit both sides of the erector spinae and the lower traps going all the way down to your lats. We're gonna go ahead and get on the side and come around all the way through, hitting the lower lats, hitting the, the lower traps, hitting the erector spinae muscles all the way deep into the QL muscle. All right, side to side, you're gonna do 10 reps each side. Nice and slow and controlled, making sure you're breathing is adequate. All right, okay, so now we're gonna move on to the upper back, the muscles of the T-spine, the scapula. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find the mid part of your back, then you're gonna go ahead and hug yourself, creating a round protraction of the shoulder blades. From there, you're just gonna roll all the way up until the bottom of your neck, and then roll through to the mid part of your back. Breathe in and out as you go to roll. You can also turn to one side again and hit both sides iso iso isolated. <clears throat> Back and forth 10 times and breathe. All right, so now we're gonna work our way into the lats. So latissimus dorsi muscle in the upper part right where the, uh, right where the uh, armpit meets. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay sideways, right? Arm comes up from there, plant your foot and you're just gonna drive all the way through, all the way up to the armpit and back down. Do that about 10 to 20 times and then repeat to the other now side. we're gonna move our way into the pec minor and major. So you're gonna have your hand up here. Our hips are flat down, all right? From there, you're gonna get on the toes, right? And then you're just gonna roll through up into the uh, armpit and back down, small motion, right? Really hitting the pec minor, the top quadrant of the chest meets the shoulder, and then all the way down to where the serratus anterior meets. 
All right, guys, so I gave you a rundown of the recovery methods that you can utilize. I also gave you a rundown of foam rolling, a self myofascial release treatment, and overall massage therapy treatment that you can utilize, you know, post training or the day after just to make sure that you're recovering for your next training session. If you have any questions, you know what to do, hit the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe so you know when my videos come out to hit the notification so you're ready to go as soon as they do come out. Again, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.